How do we keep our workflow in check? Actively, I mean. Which practices can give us this extra edge? And what really impacts how effective our work is? What can help us bring more focus and enhance collaboration within the teams? Today, we are diving into actively managing the items in the workflow. Kanban practice number two. And we will learn what are the four golden rules for keeping those items in check, meaning actively managing our work in progress. Hi, I'm Maria and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome back in my fresh new setup. And today we're delving into the art of actively managing our work in progress. Remember my last video about defining and visualizing the workflow? Consider this a sequel. Work in progress, one of our favorite phrases in Kanban. We mention it a lot. I remember back in 2021, when I read the Kanban Guide for Scrum Teams by Daniel Vacanti, the author of the Kanban Guide as well, I was watching his videos on active management of workflow and it felt like a revelation. You know, one of those aha moments that just click. Suddenly, everything about Kanban started making sense. It was like a missing puzzle piece in the quest for flow optimization. And I vividly recall one of the pivotal moments during one of my Scrum team's daily Scrum. While the Kanban guide doesn't mandate any meetings, you don't need to do the daily thing, I found that walking the board actually worked wonders. You can catch my take on it in the walk the board video. It's one of the most viewed videos on my channel. And I remember this one team struggling with an outdated board and the CEO of items stuck in the limbo. They had the infamous blocked column. So I suggested a walk the board activity during the daily scrum and they were open to it. A half an hour affair of a team of just five. Can you imagine? I promised the next ones will be better. What we did was go over each and every in-progress item on the board. It took ages and not all even got resolved at the same time because they were there for so long they even forgot what they were all about. But slowly but surely they got the hang of it. Within a week those daily meetings became more efficient and I could withdraw myself from leading them and enhancing the self-management of the team. And you can see how their work understanding and collaboration improved. It's one of my proudest success stories. Seeing the team's productivity soar and hearing the product manager and other team members actually being very thankful for helping them get better. And all it took was a little nudge in the right direction. The joys of effective scrum mastering by a lumberjack. And through the years of experience, one thing became crystal clear to me. If you want something to work, you better start using it. And that's especially relevant when using the Kanban board. If you have it, but you never look at it, you never update it, because it doesn't make sense. Once you start using it, Every day you start keeping it updated and your work becomes more transparent, visible and manageable. And now let's see the four practices I mentioned to help us and our teams get more efficient and actively manage the work in progress. There are four. Controlling work in progress, avoiding work items piling up in any part of the workflow, unblocking blocked work, and ensuring work items do not age unnecessarily using the SLE as a reference. Number one, controlling work in progress. Does it ring a bell? The work in progress limit. Controlling work in progress is a core component of Kanban. Why is it so crucial? It's the antidote to those pesky challenges like work piling up at some part of our workflow and all those distractions. So how do we work our magic? By applying the whip limits, work in progress limits. You heard about them, didn't you? Sometimes people say you're not really doing Kanban if you are not limiting your work in progress. And there's something about it. And now 
did you know that if you are already getting to limiting your work in progress, you don't have to do it column by column with number to each of those. You can also have one number for the whole board or different numbers in different parts of the board. So there are no restrictions to that. It's all about boosting efficiency and not bossing your team around. Number two, avoiding those items piling up in any part of the workflow. Ever heard of little law in Kanban? It's the link between the throughput, cycle time and the work in progress in one neat formula. The longer the queue, the slower your system goes, the higher lead time, less throughput and of course the items get aged. So we need to keep an eye on those items and here comes the next rule that helps. Rule number three, those rules don't have numbers, I'm just inventing them for clarity of the video and that's unblocking blocked items. How do we do that? So if we have a pile, usually some of them would be blocked. And what happens? We love starting work again, right? So we abandon the blocked item and move on to a new one. It's cool starting new things. We established that already in the last episode. Before abandoning this work item, it would be good to actually think like, can somebody help me to move forward with it? Is there anything I can do? And Retrospectives can come to the rescue. They can help to create policies within the team and establish what can we do in such cases. For example, if we notice that we have quite a lot of those external dependencies, is there a way that we can bring some talent to our team, swarm or do anything so that we remove those dependencies once and for all? It's good to use those retrospectives to find patterns. The same goes for big items. We have this tendency of, oh, this cannot be broken down into smaller ones. Can't it really? Maybe we can find ways to slice items in smaller ones. So retrospectives are our chance to spot trends, brainstorm solutions, and sometimes even realize that we don't need this item anymore. There are many techniques for unblocking items and we explain them thoroughly in our Pro Kanban training. So let's unblock the workflow and keep that momentum flowing. Last but not least, number four, ensuring work items do not age unnecessarily using the SLE as a reference. SLE, as in service level expectation, is our go-to metric to gouge our system health. Unlike a formal service level agreement where we take the crystal ball and we just decide what will be the date when we finish all the work and we seal it with blood, service level expectation is an expectation. Again, we use empiricism. So we check our experience, we check our historial, the metrics, and check how long it usually takes for an item to be done. And we can also use it, the item age, as a leading metric to check what can proactively be done in case we see those numbers get out of hand. You will see that one of the very little mentioned metrics, like item age, can work wonders if you actually start paying attention to it. This is awesome, isn't it? With just four simple tricks, you can unlock a world of improvements. It's truly amazing to see how Kanban transforms people's work for the better. I hope you grasp the significance of active management of the work in progress and uh, will make use of it. Reach out to me on LinkedIn if you're interested in joining my Pro Kanban training or hosting a session at your company. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, bye-bye.